Well, good morning, you handsome devil. What are you doing laying there on my pillow? Getting a little bit of a sun bath? I'll pop those blinds open for you. I have to take off to go do the vlog today, John. Ja. I'm doing something a little special today, but we'll see you when we get back. What do you say? Days with Jordan the Lion, and that face begins now. And let's turn this sucker on now. Well, hello, my friends. About a month and a half or two months ago, I came out here, filmed the vlog at the place we're gonna see today. Somebody let me in, let me walk all the way around, I filmed the whole vlog, and then somebody came from the back and said, oh, you weren't supposed to be able to be in here. Somebody accidentally let you in here. So I agreed with them that I would not post that vlog, and uh, I would come back out because today is the start of a sale they're having at Barris Custom Cars. The man who created the Munsters coach, the monkey's car, most of the TV cars you've ever seen, movie cars, everything, and including the Batmobile. So let's go take a look at this sale. Well, we've already arrived, and before we've even made it to the front of the store, we're seeing that Barris Custom logo. Now here it is. This place has a really fascinating story because Mr. Barris got his start by his parents letting him customize their car when he was in elementary school. This set off a reaction. He loved the, uh, the effect and how people reacted to it that he just started doing it as often as he could. So he started up a, a business out here in Compton. One day, that business caught on fire. He, uh, he got a phone call. They said, all of your buildings have burned down except for one. So he was pretty much ready to throw in the towel when his wife said, you know what? That one car you were working on that's supposed to race was in that building. Maybe that's a sign you shouldn't give up yet. So he kept going and ended up becoming one of the most famous car makers in the history of cars. Here we are, Barris Custom. Now right here on the gate you see half of the Barris name and on the other part of the gate is the same. So what's going on today is uh, Mr. Barris, George Barris, collected as much as you possibly could probably collect. He has all kinds of original drawings of car designs. He has, uh, you know, Hot Wheels, various models of things that he designed that came out. And he's been storing them all these years. A few years after his death now, the family's decided to start making it available to the public. Well, right here you can already tell there's tons and tons of posters. And actually, uh, I got the day that I was here, his son Jared walked around with me, so we're gonna find him. And he actually showed me a lot of the hand-drawn um, designs and how they were done. Now, if you look at the walls, you'll see posters all over the walls from different movies, different TV shows, because those are all things he was a part of. And when I came in here and met with Jared, I said, what's the deal with the Liberace? And he said, oh, he made one of uh, Liberace's cars. Now, like I said, Mr. Barris was quite the collector, and he collected just about anything that had to do with um, any of the movie cars that he made. So you'll see tons of Batman, tons of, check this out, these are actually signed. So I probably will have to get that, that's the Munsters coach signed. Now one of the things that Jared told me that was really fascinating was he said when his dad, or when his grandfather, George, would design these cars, he would literally hand draw or he would get a printout of what the actual model looked like that they released and he would just start drawing his cuts. And he would basically, the way you would dissect something in a drawing, that's how he would do it and then he would make it happen in the car. Now Mr. Barris used to have a lot of the uh, collector's auto shows and here are some of the books from some of those shows. Some of the old posters. Look at that. How cool is all that? God, you just you just dream that people would collect this kind of stuff, you know, and keep it all together for sales like this. Look how many people are here. I mean, the line's going all the way outside. So right in here is Jared. This is the guy that I met, and he actually said, hey, give me a call this week, and we'll get you back in here, and you can film this stuff. This, he told me at one point, was um, this was one of the original frames of the Batmobile, they had like three original frames. Um, and that his uh, his grandfather had a custom sound system that was named after him. And so since he was into new technology, he wanted to have that put into a Batmobile, even though it wasn't originally authentic, he wanted it put in there. And right over here is a, uh, a Munsters coach that they built in 1981. So you guys will get a better view of that in the future. 
That's right. If you saw the Flintstones movie, he made those cars as well. Yep, made the mystery machine. Now I noticed when I was in here the last time that there's a picture of the Munsters coach in a local parade in New York and I said he wouldn't have taken that original car all the way over there. He probably had a couple of them, didn't he? And uh, he said, no, actually he didn't. He said he just didn't care if anything happened to it because he said, hey, I can always rebuild it. So when you saw, see the picture of that eventually in that parade, that was the original Munsters coach that they took from Los Angeles all the way over to New York. And one of the great things that Mr. Barris did was he never sold any of these cars when he made them to the studios. So uh, one of the things he would do is he could just keep the car and then he could rent it out, send it out to shows and a lot of times when the uh, production would say hey we want a car to take out on shows they wouldn't want the original car they would want a second car so he would end up making another car look at this James Dean little bastard cookie jar may have to look into that one and uh, yeah one of the things I noticed was that there was not only did he keep all the original like cars and things like this but he also kept all the original boxes look you can buy some of Barris tires there's a George Barris Maryland picture Actually, this is just the box. Pretty cool box. Batmobile 3. Yeah, when I walked through here before, I don't know if we'll see it today, but um, he actually had uh, Barris bicycles made and he had some of the boxes and everything here. These old classic photos he's selling for 10 bucks. This cardboard cutout of Flip Wilson's 100. It's kind of cool. Now this is kind of what I was talking about. Look at these 8x10s of him with the Batmobile. He just kept everything. There's crash site photos of James Dean's little bastard. There's a picture of George Barris inside the little bastard. Tons and tons of books and figures and clothes. I told you he was a collector. Even McDonald's toys. Here they're selling some handwritten notes and stuff like that. I think I'll probably buy some of those because they're only eight bucks. Look at that, there's a picture of the uh, Donnie and Marie car. And of course the Dukes of Hazard gang and the General Lee. I think I'm gonna buy this one because he signed his name at the bottom of it. Oh wow, check that out. Check out the posters, I love this one. The bathtub car. And these are all Batman movie posters. So what this frame is, is uh, his grandson was telling me this was actually supposed to be the last car that George was working on. They were gonna turn this into something and it just never got started. So it was a project car they held onto forever and uh, finally decided just to let go at this sale. So this technically could have been, was almost the last Barris custom car by George. Oh yeah, of course he did the DeLorean from Back to the Future. I wonder what the deal is with this. Five bucks. I should almost buy this lion. I mean, a lion here? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Jordan the lion buys a lion at Bears Custom. I have no idea why there is a, uh, it looks like Satchel Paige bobblehead. Wow, apparently they had a John Wayne Monopoly. How about that? Check that out. That's almost like Cobra Kai. I know what that is, like a gi? Well, apparently uh, George Barris was a Clark Gable fan as well. Yep, he did Herbie. Look, there's Gomez Adams. Ghostbusters, of course. Mighty Morphin. Whoa, there's a poster of Rex Smith from Street Hawk, also in Pirates of Penzance. I'll check that out. These are all signed. Man, look at this place. Whoa, this guy got the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car. Look at that. What a classic. Look at that. And it was one of Barris's personally owned, man. Congrats. Well, this is for the Academy Awards. Address to George Barris right here. Look here, it says Michael Bass, Nancy Allen, bunch of names I don't know, but I see Rosanna Arquette, Corbin Burnson, 
Yeah, Mel Gibson, Richard Gere, cordially invite you to attend. Oh, check that out, Jackson 5. Wow, this guy found a great one, look at that. Big cardboard cutout, only 35 bucks. Wow, that picture, Ferris with a cardboard cutout of Dean Martin. Nice buy, even with a picture of Adam West in there. Win! Little David Lee Roth poster here. Some old school John Travolta Rolling Stone. Now this is pretty cool. He has some scripts here I was noticing. I saw a, a uh, 1966 or 67 script from Good Times. Here's Degrassi High. Check that out. Maybe I have to get something out of here. See if we can find anything pretty interesting. I was gonna buy the Good Times, but the woman standing in line beside me really wanted it. So I was like, okay, you can have it. Vicky. Yeah, most of these I don't. Night Heat. Most of these I don't recognize. Carmen. Story of Carmen Miranda. Cliff's New Lady. It's a Cheers script. Interesting. September 30th, 1986. Look at that. The, uh, the Shaguar from. Austin Powers and even comes with his little sticker. Hundred bucks. Even has some old Playboy cars, but uh, no Dorothy Stratton or anything like that, unfortunately. So what I'm told the plan is now after the sale is that this entire room, what he's hoping to do is turn it into a small museum where um, some of the Barris cars, some of the more famous ones that they've sold in the area, they're gonna borrow back and have on display for a short time. Um, he's saying something like, in the other room, they, right now they have a Batmobile, the Munsters coach, and one of the cars from Knight Rider, but he wants to bring in like two or three other cars in this space right here. And this whole section over here is pretty much his collection of old car magazines. So I just saw a sign that uh, says, for the next, it's a three day sale. Starting tomorrow, everything is 20% off, and the day after that, it's going to be 50% off. Take his advice don't smoke dope, fry your hair. So, this stack right here is all kind of like hand drawn stuff. Some of them are tires, different uh, ideas for cars, different things. You can see this is a uh, this is the gone AWOL. So these drawings are the big money. This one's 800 bucks. And we'll go through a couple of the uh, couple of them without destroying them to see what else he has. Computer Pony Express. Computer baseball. These look like all designs for like early computer and video games. Yeah, there's computer football. Interesting. The Royal Revcon. We've got, look at that, that thing's awesome. How much is that one? Well, we're almost ready to pay. It's been quite a day. I have a stack of stuff to get. Everything is $10 and below. Not too bad. Well, on our way out, let's take a look at this guy. Now we have a little bit of time. I love that hood ornament. This is supposed to be a, uh, I guess, a hot rotted out. It's got the Evil Knievel 1 on there. Kind of US mail car. But it's also got a little unicycle. Look at the, uh, the seats inside. Those are pretty rad. Take a look inside. Totally cool. Totally, totally cool. This is the first time I've ever heard of them doing this and uh, like I showed you guys inside, they have a ton of stuff that you might want to get and after today everything is discounted. So if you see this in time, come out, enjoy the fun and pay homage to the great George Barris. And I'd say his career is a dang good example as to why you never give up. He had a fire burn down his whole business except for one little building and he made an empire out of it. Awesome. And yes, 
He also did the Beverly Hillbillies car. I can't believe you haven't moved an inch since I left. You literally just sat there and waited for me to come home? What a friend. Let's go hang out. I decided to take Jaw to a different style of park today. Well, I think my plan was a failure. There's nowhere to park over here. We're going in the uh, Roger Rabbit slash Back to the Future 2 tunnel. Enjoy this. I don't think we've ever driven through this together. So we're doing it now. McFly. There's the observatory. Well, it looks like we ended up back at our old stomping grounds of Griffith Park today. Cause that's the only thing open right now with some shade. Just too hot. He's the guide here. So before I left Barris Custom Cars, I talked to his grandson, Jared, who pretty much runs the place now. And he told me to hit him up this week and we'll, uh, we'll find out a time that I can come in there and he and I are gonna shoot a video inside there where it's uh, a little bit more calm. The, uh, the sail and everything will be over and he can walk us around and tell us some stories and uh, I think it'll be a great time. So I am going to mention this. Um, I've never noticed it before uh, because it's rather recent. Since I took the opposite way around Griffith Park, um, all the way up to the observatory, they have $8 parking in every single spot. There is no more free parking in yet. This place has been burned up for six months or more, and they haven't made any effort at all to replace it so that the people that hike out here actually have somewhere to go pee. I don't understand any of that logic at all. They're making thousands of dollars a day off the parking spaces and they can't give the hikers anywhere to go to the bathroom. Hey, Ja, does that make any sense to you at all? Me either. I'll tell you, I think the, the number one gripe that I have with living in Los Angeles is that there is absolutely zero feel of community here. They, uh, they milk and milk you for every single penny and every single dime they can get out of you. Every single place you go, uh, people are being forced to just pay for things that everywhere else in the world are free. And I think it takes its toll on the people here. I think that's the reason that people are so short-tempered, why there's constantly fights and arguments and bad traffic and everything. I think it all stems from just no sense of community and caring about the people around you at all. They shot an old Valentino movie over here I've been meaning to vlog forever. It's changed a little bit, so it was pretty hard to match up, so that's why I've kind of hung off of doing it. The feel of freedom. Look at him. Wow, look at those odd things growing on this tree. What are those? What are those? Those weird green things. They almost look like, um, like those little miniature gourds or pumpkins or whatever you find around autumn. Weird. Everywhere. Dude, let's get out of here. That's how John Carpenter movies start. Next thing I know, those things start jumping off the trees and start hatching. So I'll go ahead and show you guys a couple of the things that I bought at the, uh, they were calling it the Barris Garage Sale. How appropriate, right? So I bought the Jackson's Victory Tour, the complete program. I had never seen it, and it was only 10 bucks, so. Thought, how cool, I will own George Barris's <laughs> Jackson's Victory Tour from 1984. Just thought it was kind of a cool thing. As I was uh, getting in line to pay for stuff, I saw it and I said, you know what, I gotta have it, I'll buy it. Then I bought two handwritten notes that he used to uh, handwrite and then they would fax out. Um, this one is signed, this one's not, but this one's pretty funny because he's talking about how uh, he said, uh, you were right, that thing's a real gasser, and then he mentions down here that uh, Shirley wants, it, wants the car now, kind of a little joke, and then this one he signed. This I picked up for next to nothing, man. I mean, literally, it was two bucks. It is a, um, it is an invitation to the Academy Awards party, and it's to George Barris from Morgan Fairchild, Mike Farrell, Emilio Estevez, uh, Richard Gere, Mel Gibson, Daryl Hannah, Rob Lowe. Yeah, that's uh, Rod Stewart. I mean, there's a ton of people on there. Two bucks. Thought that was pretty cool. And 
And then uh, the last thing was, this is a, uh, a note that he signed, and it comes with a brochure for when George Barris was getting into radio control cars. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this stuff, put it on eBay. They were That was basically what they were saying. They're like, hey, we know a lot of this stuff's going to end up on eBay, but we'd rather let you guys do it than us. So, um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, let go of a few things that will pay for everything I got. And they were issuing everything with... Um, Certificates of authenticity, and of course, when I got there, I ran into my friend Adam the Woo. I uh, I was pretty sure he'd be there, but uh, yeah, there he was. Kind of funny how great minds think alike. I didn't forget the posters. It's going to be hard to show you. This one is uh, I think I showed you while we were there. This is the uh, let's see how I can do this. This is the bathtub car. Yeah, I bought the poster of the bathtub car. It was only $3. And then this, just because I have a soft spot in my heart for this band and for Rhino Records. There we go. I got this poster of the monkeys. It was Rhino announcing they were putting out some of the monkey stuff on records and tapes. And since George had created the monkey's car, that's why he had this. And I picked this up for 5 bucks, so. Couldn't not get it. It's the monkeys. Hey, hey. Oh, that is so cool of you. I just got a uh, little knock at the door and had some stuff from Amazon, and uh, thank you, Jalen. That's so nice of you. It says, your vlogs aren't polarizing, but bringing folks together. And you sent me the uh, the polarizing lens so that I'll get rid of my uh, the glare in my camera, and a new Manfrotto tripod, which I use all the time, but I only had one, so thank you. Now I have two. It's gonna make life so much easier. That was so nice of you. Thank you so much, Jalen. That was so nice of you. Well, we're gonna call it a day. Thank you, Rosalie Allen, for becoming my newest Patreon. And if you'd like to become a Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Jordan the Lion. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and goodbye.